Welcome to Super Movie Brothers. Let's start the show. Super Movie Brothers. I'm your host, Super Movie Brother Dave. I'm your host, Super Movie Brother Jay. Had to put a little bit of extra gusto in that Ow! welcome because uh, I'm excited. Yeah. You're excited. We're fucking back, baby. Yeah, for the first time in like two weeks, you and I are actually getting to record with each other, and I'm just snapping a beer open for the occasion. God so. damn right. <laughs> So, man, it's, yeah, it's been a couple weeks since uh, you and I got to sit down and have a palaver. Have, yes. Have a chat. Have a talk about movies and all yes. that jazz. You've had a great time. I did. Going to Disney. Yeah, I'm not going to. I re- had a horrible time with my new job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to recount like my Disney tales because if people listen to the last episode that came out just before this, uh, me and Lauren reviewed uh, the ride, Rise of the Resistance. So, yes. Uh, there is, Check that out. There is spoilers in there if you care about the stories of a of a. Disney I ride, think you can look that over. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, it was That's fine. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun in Galaxy's Edge. Just a fun vacation. Oh, and all. My daughter, she just lit up. She loved every minute of being there, and she got made into a princess. Everyone called her princess, and I refuse to call her princess. She's still a monkey to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we did have a fantastic time, and it's tough getting back to work. I believe it. Disney's a type of vacation where you're walking 10 to 12 miles a day, and you are just go, go, go from the second you wake up to the second you go to sleep, and then you come back, and if you don't give yourself a few buffer days, which... I did, but I still feel beat. I am not with it when I'm at work right now. Like I am still out of it, still in vacay mode. The old brain. So it's really hard. It that is. adjustment. It's I know. Tough. And you took a couple weeks off before starting your new job. So I did, and you know, I was still somewhat kind of training and learning a couple things about the job. But full on, as soon as it started, I went into full high gear with a lot of travel. No, the, the, the thing was. There was just no time to breathe. It was from the moment I got up to the moment I went to bed. I was not home. I had no time to watch anything. I was learning shit constantly. I had to put on a face the whole fucking day. I'm like you know, McDonald's right it now. It was I'm exhausting. Ba, 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 ba. I'm loving it. I'm loving <laughs> seeing you just absolutely like crumble under the pressures of real My- work life balance because you've never had that. My brain really Years. hurts. Yeah. It's, it's gonna. <laughs> it's it's like, gonna. It's like mush. Wait wait until you have your own place and you're paying like a shit ton of bills and stuff like that as a result of this job. And then you start feeling like the crushing pangs of debt <laughs> on top of <laughs> on top of just the normal work life stress. I just won't, I won't leave great. my house. I'm just going to be a, like a, gonna a hermit. Be, <laughs> it's going to be great. You're going to love it. Welcome to adulting. Yeah. It's... Uh. The most, the thing you waited for your entire this life. This is very different. You've now arrived at it, and it sucks. <laughs> and it sucks. It does. Just to some degree. Start. It feels cool that I feel like I'm doing something, and I'm having a whole different kind of perception of the dynamic of our world, or at least our country, and how companies operate. Yeah. But it's exciting. It's, I mean, it's only, I'm in like my second full week. Right, so just, just look at it this way. I got to just chill out. It's only let it happen. eight. Thousand days until retirement. Oh, <laughs> just get your calendars out and start making your little hash. I marks. signed up for my four hundred one k to be like estimated retirement date or age sixty five. Eighty two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shooting for sixty five. Yeah. I a realistic. long time ago I admitted I'm like I'm gonna be re- <laughs> I'm not gonna retire I will joining, always be working the rest of my you're life. You're joining the the real working force very late in the game, mm-hmm. sir. <laughs> you you have a couple years. I'm aware. behind the eight ball. There, you're you're saying you're gonna. But retire I don't have too 20, many big expenses. Twenty five years is when you say you're gonna retire. Thirty. Laughable. Thirty. Laughable, sir. Laughable. All right, Jay. Let's head over and let's get into what are you watching? What are you watching? Watching. He's trying to watch some illegal channel. Oh, watching. No, 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 go past this. Past this part. In fact, never play 
play this again. All right, man, so what'd you get down to watching this week? Obviously, I haven't watched a whole lot. I did watch Mandalorian, you know, uh, episode five, I believe, is the one that just came out. Mm-hmm. That's about it. That's the one where he goes to a, a desert planet of sorts, and that's all I'll say. Uh, and other than that, I, I haven't really gotten around to watching a whole lot. I've thought about that, and I think I'm actually going to catch up with Mandalorian. I'm, I'm, okay. I, I don't want to. You're getting there. I liked it too much. Where yeah. like I, I just I don't want to stay out of the zeitgeist. Oh, I'm going to rewatch the whole and thing. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm probably going to catch up. I'll catch up and I'll watch it every week and then I'll rewatch it again at the very end and we'll do our full review yeah. of the season. And uh, I have also been watching the CW superhero shows, their big crossover, Infinite Crisis. With the two Supermans? With a bunch of Supermans and a, and a few Batmans. And I love so me some Brandon Routh. I don't like it. I don't like it. I haven't liked it seems slapstick and 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 haphazard it's all over the place is that the point I, it's just <laughs> every moment of it I mean it's obviously I wouldn't like it but I'm just saying isn't that kind of the point like a lot of people like but, that like, shit their, their action scenes look like a fan film and like I used to review fan films on fan film boys at Rob so like I you know I, watching it, I know what a fan film looks like. This right. look, these look like fan films, but they, they also try to pack in way too many emotional moments in every single episode, where every character has to have some big emotional turning point. And it, there's so many story beats that they're trying to fit into these five episodes that I was like, no, this, nope, nope. It, I'm just not going with it. I've never liked most of these CW shows, at least for the past five years. I haven't really been down with them, so. I guess I don't know why I thought maybe jumping on and watching this Infinite Crisis was going to be something that like was revolutionary for them. It's not. It's the same old shit, just with a bigger story. And you know, ten pounds of shit packed into a five. Understandable. Bag. That's, yeah, that's what it turns out to be. But Brendan Routh, Superman. I'm loving that. I'm absolutely. I love loving it because I I I think he's so good looking. <laughs> Right, <laughs> he's just like exactly what I think Superman. And of course, looks like. rumors rumors were that back in the day they had the digitally reduce his package in that uh superman was outfit. that a thing that was a thing that was a, that was a thing like uh, on the on the uh mid 2000s internet where it's like you hear brendan rouse got such a hog that they had to they had to reduce <laughs> they had to reduce the size of his superman britches because on that silver <laughs> screen that thing would be looking big although, although now knowing what we know about uh justice league and how much it costs just to remove a mustache oh my we God. know that it, who would have thought yeah, i know we now know that That's they bullshit. did not have to go back and yeah. did reduce his hog he's just wearing like four <laughs> pairs of tidy whiteies yeah. you know just to strap that thing down it's taped it's, <laughs> it's taped down the side of his leg <laughs> he looks like he looks like uh finkel is einhorn einhorn yeah. is finkel that's it einhorn is finkel finkel is einhorn einhorn is a man he- from, from- He's not crossing his legs. From Ace Ventura, he's got he's got his dick tucked up and taped behind his ass. Oof. God bless him. Oh, it's a bird. It's a mm. plane. It's Brendan Ralph's dick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. So that's really all I've been watching. Now, what have you been getting down with? What have you been uh, watching? Yeah, honestly, not a terrible amount, but I have caught up with two Netflix releases: The Irishman and Marriage Story. And I'll start off with The Irishman because it's been out for a little long or for a little while now. And obviously, this is something to talk about. But at the same time, not many people overly buzzing about. You know, it's it's one of those kind of movies where it is very long, right? It's obviously three and a half hours long. I think it does go by pretty swiftly. Right. It's the mob's version of Titanic. Gotcha. Yes. <laughs> now, the final the final chapter, I would say, or the final act, it does shift gears into a more one note somber um take and, and it does I understand what they're trying to do. I just didn't really care. So the problem with this movie, for me, even though it's so beautifully done and executed and acted. So you know it's good. It's it's really fantastic. And there's moments and scenes that are absolutely exceptional. I think as a package, you ultimately just walk away feeling, I really just don't care that much. (laughs) Well, so that that was my thing. That's kind of, the the, the, in a nutshell, the problem with it. (laughs) And it is a true story, though. Before even watching it is, I don't care about Jimmy Hoffa. Right, like right, I don't, right. I don't give a shit. I'm intrigued because it is partly true story, and there's some winks and nods of the mob and the, and and, and how they are um, affiliated with the 
you know, politics of that era. So it's also this thing where and the it's assassination like, of JFK alludes it's also, to. It's also this thing with like the Whitey Bulger movie. Like everyone, you know, Whitey Bulger's this big sure. mythological, you know, true crime character that people have put up on a pedestal for years. And then they put a movie out it about similar. it. And it turns out that really only the people who are into that type of stuff were mm-hmm. into that movie. Or if you were from, or if you were from well, Bastin, then you were into it. But it's the same thing. Like yeah. that movie was. Very well done, yeah. very well acted. Exactly. I mean, Johnny Depp killed it. I mean, it was really haunting in a lot of ways. But at the same time, you walked away just kind of like, eh. but what it's a cold movie. It's cold. Right. It's bleak. You ultimately have no emotional attachment to any fucking character. And then you go watch Jack Jack Nicholson. You the watch, Departed. Yeah, you watch him play right. pretty much Whitey Bulger in The Departed. Uh, sort of, yeah. In a much more fantastical <laughs> way. And right. it's far more interesting. And oh, you yeah. like it so much more. <laughs> yeah. So. Because... It's more rewatchable. It's more fun. Yeah. It's more engaging in some ways. But like, it, you know, I will. And this is funny coming from me because Mr. Serious and Mr. Drama, like yeah. normally those kind of things I I've, resonate to. Or, I've or, changed you. <laughs> I've changed you. Just like my crooked dick has changed some uh, <laughs> women. Some women's trajectory in her vagina. Hey, Lauren, like I've the, changed you. She, she, she signed the contract <laughs> for that dick. <laughs> Legally binding. <laughs> Legally binding that dick. <laughs> Bind it to a crooked dick forever. Uh, now, I will get around to watching The Irishman. I do think at, it's worth watching for sure. At some point. Yeah. But it's tough when you have a kid and you just went on vacation, you're oh. editing a podcast, sure. you're, you're, sure. you're, you're running a business and you're, and you're doing things that all normal adults have to do and you have to fit in three and a half hours to watch a mob movie that you're mildly interested in. Just not, it's just not. Look, I understand. When I get to it, I'll get to it, but I'm far more interested in the next movie you watch. But uh, please give me a score for The Irishman. Let's do like a little, we're doing like a mini review here. Give me a, a score. minus. A I'm minus. Still, yeah. Okay, so it's solid. It's oh, it's, super it's, solid. It's absolutely solid, and right. there, there's a lot of interesting things that it touches on. But um, ultimately, that's really what it comes down to for me is right. the fact that I ultimately just did not care about these characters, and it wasn't really exciting. <laughs> You know, there were some interesting, right. engaging sequences and moments that he really pulled off that was pretty cool. Um, that was interesting, but ultimately, you know. All right, all right. Uh, that, there was were the drawbacks for me. Your next, your 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 next review that you. Yes. Yeah, so this is interesting for me because Marriage Story, right? Marriage Story. Adam Driver, Scarlett Johansson, Noah Baumbach. I have yeah. a. I, I'm a I'm a fan. I, I will say that I'm a fan. I I, I liked Before a we lot get into this, of his films. Do you think Do you think like big Hollywood is kind of scared, given the level of directors that are now being drawn in by things like Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus and stuff like that? I mean, Disney is they are big Hollywood, so that doesn't really count. But but like Netflix is drawing in some some big True. names. But I, this is my theory. You know that the old theory of you know, one for him, one for me, one okay. for them, one for me kind of thing. All the one I, for I, thems are going into the theaters and the ones for me's are going to directly to streaming services. Right. For the, something right in that vein where like every because when you think about it, almost every single actor is, you know, dip their toe into the streaming service pond one way or another. Uh, well, the big ones, well, yeah. at least it's starting Start, to get to starting that point. To, yeah. And, and, and so it's becoming a little bit more acceptable. Um, okay. So I, I, I think you're not getting much flack from Hollywood from from doing that anymore. It's also to interesting some degree, perhaps, that but ne- not really. That Netflix just purchased a theater to release their. Did they? Yeah. And it, so. you know what that's for? That's simply just to make sure they can get award no, they considerations. Need, you need to have a certain number of screens to get award considerations. What is it? 350 screens or something like that? Uh, I, you just have to stream yeah. your movies through theaters for X amount of period of time or, or, yeah. or so, something like that. I'm sure, I don't know. I'm sure that's why, but it's it's interesting. Like, because I mean, we're not going to talk. I about think they're going to at least dabble with. But the what? If, but like, but like, what if they bought a movie? Their chain? own chain, of course, and they might. What if they bought? A chain? They have that kind of money, right? Because apparently they have more money than God. They have way more money to spend in marketing for awards campaigns. You think Netflix is actually making money? I Hollywood think Studios. I think Netflix has been backed by some big people. They at least spend more money. They spend the money. They have the money to spend. They may be profitable someday, but I don't think my six or seven ninety nine that they're getting a month and everyone else is is really going into paying for 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 some of the, for, for something like I Six don't, Underground. I don't I think know. it's paying for something like that. I know. And I don't want to see that movie. I don't think I don't think Netflix has ever operated in the black. I just I I wonder. Like I'm I'm assuming that they operate in the red or yellow areas. Sure. 
um, at least for a while. You know, there's a good chunk of years that I think we're definitely in the red or, or, or yellow, as you say. But, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know where the, what the whole, I don't understand this. Right. But it's weird because, because you know how much money there's. We spending know on this we, kind of stuff. We'll, we'll talk about in news how successful Disney is this year. Uh, and and, sure. and we know how successful or, or not successful Warner Brothers has been. I mean, obviously, Fox got bought out. We see their numbers. We know what their movies make. And we, the and, fact that so many streaming devices or services are actually being created Apple, Disney, they know there has to be real money being made by Netflix for Somewhere. them doing this. Somewhere. I am sure there it is. has to. I don't know. It makes it has to. It has to. I, so just, I think it's I one just, of those I know kind of I things. don't get it, and I know there's a lot of people out there who don't get it as well. And I know that Netflix is purposely cagey about it. So uh, it, And that's part of the allure, right? <laughs> I guess that is part of the allure. And I think it's also part of what pisses Hollywood off yeah, a lot. It, yeah, it's like, yeah, they're very secretive. Yeah, where it's like their numbers are out there for display, and Netflix is just like, we just had 150 million people watch this movie on you know at midnight when it well, released. Well, as long as it turn, doesn't turn into like movie pass. <laughs> Exactly. Where it goes belly up out of nowhere. Exactly. All right. Uh, which could happen. Marriage you story, Jay. I'm sorry to die, to derail you. No, no, no. It's fine. So it's just you funny know. that our two big movies this week were Netflix originals. So true, true. And uh, Noah Baumbach, he is the writer and director, and this is based on his own divorce. So it's interesting, and it's very, very semi accurate. You know, to be honest, because you know, or Adam Driver plays him essentially. You know, as a director. And okay. a writer and based out of New York and he is married to Scarlett Johansson, who is a actress of some sort. You know, she's not really a big star, but she's a good enough talented actress where she's doing a lot of theater, uh, working with him in New York, and she's kind of took a blind side to LA when they had a child. So the way this kind of opens up is interesting where, you know, they're in a counseling session. And they're supposed to talk about or write down everything great about the other person. Okay. And there's a great sequence where it shows all the great things that this one character does. Did he? Did he simply all just the great write things down? that this other character does? Did he just write down because it's Scarlett Johansson? Because she got a great ass, and you got your head all the way up it. <laughs> <laughs> great lips. Come on. <laughs> Um, and, and then it kind of ensues into an itch. This is hard to explain. And I actually want to rewatch this movie because there are so many little moments where he dives into, it's hard to explain, you know, it's, it's not a typical stereotypical film. It's not a blue Valentine. It's not a, um, you know, that Vince Vaughn, Jennifer Aniston movie, the breakup, breakup. you know, it's, you know, there, there are some heated moments and arguments that are really effective, but at the same time, they do care about each other. But when they get into the actual divorce aspect and Ray Liotta and Laura Dern come in playing these hotshot lawyers, it completely changed and shifts into a whole different kind of animal. And it's really a big showcase of the reality and the the horrible aspect of legal divorce and and how that really just affects relationships when it shouldn't ever happen. Okay, you know, but ultimately it, it's it's an effective movie. And again, I'm assuming it's fantastically acted given who's in it. Yes, but again, I am going to re- repeat myself. I ultimately really just didn't feel anything for these characters. I just didn't care for these characters that much and that was the most daunting and shocking thing that i came across when i watched this movie is it johansson nominated for this or was she nominated for jojo rabbit for uh this golden globes this okay perhaps both Hmm. possibly both it could be both yeah it's true because she's lead actress in this movie supporting actress with golden globes for jojo yeah um which would be a comedy this would be a drama so mm. they separate those categories but who cares uh but either way don't care this is one of those movies where I know I, f- I feel like I could have missed a beat. I could have missed something. I could have been in the wrong state of mind when I watched this movie. You know, is it weird that I don't want to watch this movie and then go see him as Kylo Ren <laughs> next week? Like I don't want to watch this movie with him and then go watch that. Just like I couldn't watch Girls like before going to see exactly. Star because then all I see is his character from Girls. Like it's almost like I don't want to be tainted. And the problem by- is he looks exactly the same. Yeah, he never changes his hair. 
Right. He doesn't okay. wear any kind right, of weird yeah. makeup. He doesn't wear any kind of crazy weird clothing or change like, his it's, voice. It's tough to watch something is, like This Is Where I Leave You, where right. he's such a fun character and stuff like that, and then go watch him as like Kylo Ren. <laughs> You're like, I but but it's you. actually really impressive him for him as an actor, right? Because he's able to oh, for sure. pull that off. Oh, for like, sure. That's really hard to do. For sure. <laughs> Have the exact same fucking look, but actually pull off a character in a different kind of movie. I'm not sure if he's there around. yet, but he actually probably will be one of our top actors of of all and who would have thought who the fuck would have ever thought that this tall gangly awkward dude who like used to be a marine but like is like you know what he reminds me of he's so weird and awkward but i love he's 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 replaced what adrian brody wanted to be i think yeah exactly yeah (laughs) to be honest when you really think about it they have a very similar profile and look we should put them we we should get them in a room and just have a battle of the noses (laughs) where the fuck has adrian brody been the battle of the schnozzes uh he's been on a bunch of direct video on demand releases god bless him yeah He's been, mm. yeah. Mm-mm. Because him and Cuba Gooding Jr. <laughs> after they <laughs> won their Oscars, <laughs> all downhill. Jay, just score marriage story for everybody. Um, I'm I'm loosely giving this a B plus. Okay, okay. Because I, I'm gonna, I it could go up. I don't like the way you grade. I hate the way you grade. I'm giving this a, a solid, solid B plus. This could easily go up after a second viewing. I need to watch it again. I was uh, I was very tired when I watched this movie after a long day at work. So I I could have been a two and a half and hour long the, movie after a long day of work. See now you I know you're starting to learn why I don't so, watch as much as you do. <laughs> I'm I don't judge me, but I promise you I will refresh my grade after i watch it a second time and i'm sure by that time dave will be um giving his score to this movie i won't, as well. I won't score it after you've scored it um if i didn't see it when i when i saw it with you because i feel like i might be tainted by maybe your views and stuff like that i won't give it a score but i will give impressions all right okay let's head over and let's get into our news All right, Jay, we got quite a few news stories to get through, so let's just get down to it. All right, first up, speaking of Netflix and studios and everything like that, Disney becomes the first studio in history to make more than $10 billion at the worldwide box office for the year of 2019. Mm. And it's no surprise, right? And they're not done making money yet either because they no. still have they still have Star Wars Episode Nine coming. Uh yeah. But Frozen Two just came out, made Gangbusters. Of course. Toy Story Four, Gangbusters, Avengers Endgame, Gangbusters, and then of course on I'm top not of even that, sure what else, but Mar- there's a lot. Yeah, Captain Marvel, and then uh, they had some bombs too. I mean, they had some bombs, and it's not like everything knocked it out of the park. Aladdin, you know, didn't not exactly knock it out of the park. That's true. And I'm not sure if Disney... Actually, I think it did still cross a billion. Oh, no, I'm not sure if it crossed a billion, but it definitely made its money back. It was In the foreign pro- markets. It was yeah. a profitable film. They also had Lion King this year, which also made them turn to profit, but was not well received. But it doesn't matter. It is a juggernaut that is just... All about that bottom line, y'all. Not, I mean, not to, be, not to be too punny, but you know, it's it's it really is the snowball that, stopped at the, that, that started at the top of the Matterhorn and is now a giant boulder at the bottom of it. So... Uh, it's and and I just gave them money, <laughs> like a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it by going to going to Walt Disney World. So it's I can see where some people get it in their heads that it is the big bad evil corporation because it does seem like they hold a majority sway in our entertainment and. It, they are which is normal right there's always going to be somebody uh, right but they're but, but they Disney are has a lot of hand they hand. are bringing us kind of like a singular vision of entertainment where there's not a lot of room now for the little things and that's where netflix like we were talking about and and amazon prime that's where they shine now because it well it, it can't this stuff can't stand toe to toe with that stuff i mean so much so that wonder woman was supposed to come out in december of december of 2019 and they moved it back into the summer now and a lot of people say that that's because they they think that wonder woman can hold her own in the summer and stuff like that and i think that's 100 percent true it's true she can have a summer blockbuster that is given true. the success of wonder woman but they also Let's face it. They had to get it out of the way of Frozen 2 and Star Wars to not get steamrolled as well. That's the reality. That's the reality of it. Because those movies can't play in the summer. No. No, I don't think so. I think I think Star Wars with the December releases is the, probably one of the biggest 
uh, marketing moves and schedule moves that I that that has ever been done because historically they've always released them in in May and bring, having it come out in December is a big deal because there's nothing else everything has to get out of your way before Christmas because Star Wars is coming so. Yeah, uh, but it also it to, for me it just feels more like a holiday movie to some degree. I don't know what it is. I'm not sure. Yeah, I got no. I understand about it. May. I get it. I uh, you know to some degree, but I prefer December. I wear my mouse ears with pride. Okay. Like, <laughs> I, I, oh, we know you do. I like it. I I, I like it. I I I'm not the against formula it. doesn't bother me. I I just wish they had other outlets like they, Hulu, but they do now. They do to actually put money behind it. Put out original risky material. They do. In, what do you discover think? Discover an A24. That's what Fox is going to be right. for them now. Fox and Fox Hopefully. Searchlight and stuff. Well, I mean, they, they technically distributed Jojo Rabbit this year. Yeah, but... They didn't make it. This is the year they fucking acquired Fox. Right, right. It, well, Things are going to be shifting we actually to some won't, degree we actually won't within see the Disney's, next couple years. We won't see Disney's plans, for, like true plans for Fox until 2021, 2022. 22. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. So, but anyway, it's interesting. $10 billion, first one in history. Ooh, and gosh, I yeah. don't, I, I really don't see it as a record that's going to be surpassed in any time sh- you know, soon unless it's by Disney themselves next year and they surpass themselves. I don't think they will do that next year, but... Um, um, this this year with Disney in particular, it's really hard to beat yeah. with the kind of movies that they had on their slate. And if you look at the top movies this year, they were all they were most of them were Disney Corporation films. I mean, they may not be the best critically reviewed, but they are the best at the box office, and that's just how that's just that's just that's just how that's the world we live in. Yeah, <laughs> let's just say it. That that's just how the mouse. We still have a twenty four, buddy. <laughs> you <laughs> at least have I it. do. You have it. Thank God. Next news story. Speaking of Disney and some people praying for them to have a misstep, this one 100% is a misstep. So tell me if you remember this character in Aladdin, Prince Anders. He is the white guy who shows up for about 30 seconds to ask for the hand of Jasmine in marriage, and he's a big old moron, he's a big old idiot, and he's getting a spinoff movie. I'm assuming that this is coming to Disney+, Plus because this cannot go into the theaters. No, there's no way that's going to go into theaters. I'm still shocked that it's actually going to be greenlit on Disney Plus. Look, but I pull, they need material, right? They need material. I got to pull a Ricky Waters here. For who? For what? Like, why is this happening? Who out there from fans, the, even the people who enjoyed Aladdin, look at each other walking out and goes, you know what? I could do with a 90 minute Prince Anders movie. <laughs> But I mean, who who like who walked out of the theater? Even people who liked Aladdin looked at each other and went, "You know what? I really want to know what Anders is up to after this story." I don't think anybody did. Nobody, nobody cares what this dude was up to, and it's it's just so weird. But I don't think this is actually going to happen. I, I just can't imagine if it goes to Disney Plus, it one hundred percent can happen because they. You're right. They need content. They just need content. And if they're doing series, they might just do a pilot just to see if they can get a feel or just start writing scripts. This isn't a, no, this is a movie. This is a film. Fuck. Yeah. This is not a Disney I don't Plus get it. I just series. don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. I have no clue either. But all, all I know is that we're, we're, we are going to get the whitewashed version of Aladdin coming to Disney Plus. Next news story. All right, Jay, you and me should be jumping for joy right now because... One of our favorite films that came back way back in 2015, mm. all the way back then, mm. fresh off the cancellation of his Justice League movie, he went to work on Mad Max Fury Road, and George Miller would like us all to know, Mad Max ain't dead, baby. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! We, we heard some rumblings last summer about the same the, the, the same type of thing from him, where sure. he said he was going to be coming back. He does have a movie that's going to be coming out in 2020, uh, or at least production begins in early 2020. It's called 3,000 Years of Longing. Uh, it's going to star Idris Alba and Tilda Swinton. But he says that all great directors... So th- this, this, is a, this comes from an interview he did with Deadline, and he says, I'm not done with the Mad Max story. And I think you have to be a multitasker. And there's certain, there's certainly another Mad Max coming down the pike after this. We're in preparation on that as well. So he's got two irons in the fire. He's on, he's in pre-production okay, so he ha- for this film coming out. Sure, but he's also in pre-pre-production on working on Mad Max. So, well, I hope he has a really, really good assistant director. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> he's going to ultimately finish these movies. Because I don't think he's going to survive. He also hints that he's there being so more, old. He he also hints that there being more than one sequel to Fury uh, per, Road. Perhaps if they if they keep up with this same kind of feel and this world, and they have the technology for it now. Oh, for sure. And they they were able to if they keep it practical that was important if you can keep it practical like, like they did with the fury road we'll be fine we'll be fine you just can't go to cgi because then people are going to hate it it's going to look too corny i don't think they will i, I mean that, that, i don't think that's george miller's thing i don't i don't think that's going to happen whatsoever that's my fear if you had to pick somebody to take over for him who oh, would you pick god on the spot like this yeah um um your guy that did that fucking movie with the who's doing robocop lee wano from upgrade Okay. You know, because I think he has that raw sensibility and a playfulness to him um, that he can really dive into this kind of world and have fun with it. Okay. Even I, though he has no, you know, experience with budget. <laughs> right. You know, I, I just feel like he, ha- he, he could have an interesting take on it. Okay, I could see I could see him doing that. I have somebody else in mind. Chad Stahelski, the director behind John Wick. Okay. Yeah. I like his use of color, and I think I think that that was something that was very important uh, in Mad Max. I don't Fury love Road. it. I don't love it. I like the idea of practical stunts and everything. Like I know. That. I know. And he comes from a stunt uh, man background okay. and stuff all like right. that. I'm. I'm. All right. I'm growing to it. Okay. I'm growing into it. I or, like it. or what about David Leach, who was the director of Deadpool two, and also supposedly a ghost. I don't love it. The, go- the ghost director <laughs> of of uh, John Wick Chapter One. So. Uh, uh, he, I didn't like Deadpool 2. I did not really like it. Yeah, look at that. George Miller directed Babe, Pig in the City. So, okay. <laughs> look, don't be knocking Babe. That's a fantastic movie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> la, 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 Don't start, David. Don't start. Don't, don't, don't you besmirch my fucking Babe, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Next news story. All right. It, it, it's apparently been confirmed by Zack Snyder in both Twitter and and pictures and all other manners of media that the Snyder Cut exists. It is real. Uh, he posted that he posted a picture of the reels in their canisters together with number two one four written on it, meaning two two hundred and fourteen minutes. The Snyder Cut exists. Uh, Warner Brothers execs, DC execs, have said that yeah, that's just a rough cut. That's a production cut. You know, there's no there's there's nothing done effects wise on it or anything like that. Um, but 214 minutes is actually kind of short for a production cut, right? Because there's those are usually four yeah, to five produ- hours. Production wasn't even over when he left. That's 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 true, but that's, that's what, a fact. No, it's not. That's what we were told. We were told that 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 Joss Whedon was coming in to finish up, but really he could have wrapped production on that, and we know that he could have because they, because no they. Because Henry Cavill had already left and gone to start Mission Impossible uh, no. by that point. That was a while ago. I don't really want to think about it. But I'm 100% look, in on I think I, the Snyder Cut exists. I think I it's 100% real. agree that a cut exists. But as that guy said, it's just straight up film roles. I don't know whether Jason There's Momoa. There's no special effects. There's nothing else to I it. I don't know if Jason Momoa is the ultimate troll or not, but he all, he claims to have seen it and that it's amazing. No music. <laughs> oh, f- <laughs> it's fucking Jason Momoa. He's like the Will Smith of Hawaii. You know, like... <laughs> right ain't over yet. Oh, man. <laughs> He's always Mr. Uber excited and positive and fun and happy go lucky. A lot of the actors are now getting behind he's a company this. man. He's he's not gonna be shit talking on him. A lot of the actors are now getting behind this and and basically talking about how they would like to see the release of this of the Snyder Cut. So a lot of the actors that were in the yeah, film, this needs to go away. Now, I'm done with this. It's not going. I, I I'm really like I, I like we talked about this already. If it comes out, we will watch it. Yes. I don't want to pay money for it. Like, I don't want to do anything extra or whatever. I'm not jonesing for it. But if it comes, it comes. Even I don't want to keep talking about this. Even even Diane <laughs> Nelson, it's still out there. the former president of DC Entertainment, has ha- had come forward and she she tweeted hashtag release the Snyder Cut. I think there's a lot of people in the. She's know just that, trying you know, to save the brand. That's what she's doing. <laughs> she's the former. She's trying to make light she's of it. She's the former president. There's no there's no reason to save a brand. All right. So now, so I guess it's the yeah. opposite. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Look. Here's the thing. Warner Brothers, you have a partnership with HBO. Mm-hmm. 
and HBO, you have a streaming service that's starting. What better way to get a shit ton of people from the internet to to at least to at this least probably isn't even edited. Who cares? Just put <laughs> just just put it on HBO. <laughs> put it on HBO Max or whatever it's going to be called and let's and let's just let's just put this to bed. Let's all see it so we can go. Eh, it was a little bit better than the than the other version, but not by much. But without the special <laughs> effects like like how else are you going to finish it? Just finish it. You have to put like 40 million or something or more into it. It's not going to go away though. It's not going to go away. And if you get enough people on that streaming service, HBO has to purchase it from Warner Brothers, though. But That's- ultimately, I think Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers is looking at this like, um, I don't think it's hurting our brand. Fuck it. Let them talk. I think people it- are going to still see Warner Brothers movies. Well, thanks, Jay. Next news story. All right, Jay. Warner Brothers has come out, and they've given a updates on their release schedule. So Matrix 4 will be getting a release on May 21st, 2021, while the Flash movie with Ezra Miller. Mm. And we did do a news story a couple months back where he talked about how he was he was involved in the scripting process. And I remember he said something about reaching out to Grant Morrison and stuff like that. Like yep. he's been working hard behind the scenes to make this happen. He never went away. And he may actually I'm see, happy for him. He may actually see the fruits of that labor. Uh July first, twenty twenty two, the Flash movie should release. We also get updates on this, Jay, that the Mortal Kombat reboot will be coming out. January 15th, 2021. Much okay. much sooner than I thought. But yeah. that but that was filming uh you know in Australia right now. Uh I th- I believe they they may have even wrapped principal photography okay. soon. So uh or at least they will be wrapping principal photography soon. Then they'll go into the effects and it'll be getting a a, a January 2021 release. I'm excited for that. Me even too. even more so than the Flash. Like I loved. Look, I love Ezra Miller. He's not my version of Barry Allen, but I did love his character. He was one of the I bright like, spots of Justice. Oh League. yeah, oh yeah, definitely. And I, I like him as an actor, and I think he has the look, and I think he had an interesting charm uh, with the character. And I'm excited for his own movie. I'm sure it's going to be interesting. I I'm a little surprised it's actually after the Matrix. So I thought the Matrix would take a little bit longer with all the special effects. Ezra Miller is a little bit busy with the Fantastic Beast franchise with Warner and his Brothers role is only well. going to get bigger and it's, and it's growing. as the movies it's growing. go on so yes. so all right that makes sense but mm, I I mean I, I'm excited I'm excited I'm, I'm happy they announced the dates I think that was important they really needed to do that I think it just it this is something that everybody wanted. They wanted the a Flash movie are for you more, years. Are you more excited for the Flash movie? Or are you more excited because Ezra Miller is a personality and a person that we like? And we want to see good things for him. Because that's... I cause, think both. Because I think... I really I, do think both. Because the character is fantastic. I think it's interesting. I think, honestly, for me, it's more that I like Ezra Miller. And I like I, I like seeing him get a little bit of a win. Like, I like that. I'm not that interested in a Flash story. I don't think they did enough to develop the Flash that we've seen. But that's why I think they're gonna. That's what they're gonna do in this movie. That's what I think. I'm excited for it. My more. excitement for it will probably grow after Birds of Prey and Suicide Squad and the Batman. And I see where DC is going forward from here because I still feel like they're on this shaky ground. Like even I agree. We're gonna do a trailer park soon for Wonder Woman 1984, and I'm not still sold. <laughs> on that i agree I right agree. now so yeah but i've been sold on a lot of things that like i wasn't crazy about aquaman sorry duty i know you loved aquaman uh i know it's your favorite film of 2018 and whatnot oh, yeah. but i loved shazam Please get your eyes checked duty Please. i i loved shazam <laughs> i did truly love shazam it, i did too i did too i have a very long it list. was a nice surprise i have a very long list of 2019 movies that i truly loved and shazam saw on that list so i don't know whether it'll make the top five cut probably not but i did really enjoy that movie and the joker did something interesting and different and i like that it's showing that at least warner brothers isn't afraid to take a risk here and there so i, I when i when i hear that they're doing a flash movie Anything that touches any of those characters from the Justice League movies, uh, you know, I I know that it's going to be standalone. I know it's gonna, not going to have anything to do with the Justice League, but I still feel like it's still tainted fruit from the poison branch that was Justice League. So I'm still tentatively worried about it for that reason. But hey, Ezra Miller, you're getting another paycheck. So good for you, buddy. Good for you, buddy. There good you go. Good for you. There you go. <laughs> 
So that's going to do it for our news this week. Me and Jay got three trailer parks that we got to break down. Uh, we're going to be doing Wonder Woman 1984, Black Widow, and the one that I think we're going to spend a little bit more time discussing. We're going to be talking about Ghostbusters Afterlife. So after a word from our sponsors, we will get into trailer park. Hey, Jay, do you like to drink? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so do I. I have a lot of problems that I really want to ignore and just, like, push super deep down inside myself. And what I need to do is drink a little bit of alcohol to make that happen. But yes. Sometimes I imbibe a little bit too much. Do you have that problem, too? <laughs> Daily. Yeah. Well, now, that you have that, now that you have that new job and you know what real stress is, yeah. something tells me that, that you've been drinking a whole lot more. Luckily, if you are like us, you're stressed, you're, you're sad, you're depressed, you drink a lot, or maybe you're just a happy son of a bitch and you like to go out with friends. Maybe you're popular. Maybe you have a lot of friends. Maybe you go out to the bars frequently, but you have this pesky problem where you're over 30 years old and now you are feeling the effects of what is known as a hangover. True. Or if you have some family members in the holiday season that need some stocking stuffers, buy them some blowfish. That's right. It is a great stocking stuffer and I guarantee you with all of the holiday cheer, they will need some themselves. So... Use our discount code SMBFISH for your 15% off. Absolutely. So head over to 4 Use promo code SMBFISH. Get your 15% off of the Miracle Hangover Cure. And if you're not much of a drinker, but you know someone who is, stuff one of those in their stockings. Beat and let the music play. No trailer park. Shout out to Dave and Jay. I don't serve, but it's a new wave. We've been on since trust God saved the right stop. I don't wanna flow until I know that the bass drop. Welcome back to Trailer Park. Me and Jay got three trailers that we're gonna break down for you. But before we get into those, there was a trailer for, uh, or at least a teaser trailer for the latest and possibly last Daniel Craig. We've heard that so many times. Oh, it definitely is. 100%. (laughs) But it's James Bond, No Time to Die. And uh, And this is not a teaser. This is a legit trailer. And it was awesome. I loved it. You're excited. I'm very excited. You know me. uh, You know. Bond does not tickle the underside of my balls. I'm not a huge fan of it, but Casino Royale is a bright spot in the action films, you know, post 2010. Like it would definitely be on my top five, sure, top ten list, yeah, you know, for sure. And Kerry Fukunaga is the director, yeah. and that makes me very. excited. I'm excited about that. I'm also excited about Rami Malek possibly mm-hmm. playing Doctor No. Some people are I saying mean, there's some fun rumors about that, and there's also a new Double O, you know, a woman uh, replacing James. Because apparently he went into retirement, and I guess something's happening where he's getting pulled out. And I think that's what intrigues me the most, the fact that he's being pulled out of retirement to return to the role. Uh, obviously, we're gonna there's going to be more trailers. We'll probably do a, a more in-depth trailer park breakdown for the next trailer. Mm-hmm. But the reason we're not doing it is because this actually came out like two weeks ago almost at this point. So Yeah, well, I mean, what, the, what one of the great things about it is it seems to have a lot of great action and and sets and a great ensemble but it has a little bit more of that fun charm you know that i think a couple of the other movies were lacking so i'm excited about this all right jay and then the other little bit of like trailer news that i would really like to talk about is that there's been a whole bunch of tv spots for for uh the rise of skywalker oh yeah uh, for for star wars episode a lot of lot of marketing and promotions going on absolutely and i mean really from from watching them the big things that i picked up on was a a new line from the emperor you know it's time for the final battle to begin or something along those lines and uh we get a few images of kylo ren walking down like a a corridor with all the knights of ren behind him which has me uh, somewhat intrigued because we've been hearing about the knights of ren for so long now we're finally going to see it but we are a week away from it coming out and even though they have all this new footage that they've been showing there's gonna be a scene that premieres after the mandalorian episode this week uh, i i think i i'm gonna av- actually avoid that one 
because I'm so close to the release of it. I think I just want to go in and just enjoy it without... Right now, I have zero expectations. I have zero... I, 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 have, I don't know what the story is, and I don't want to try to piece it together. I just want to go in blind. Good for you, buddy. I'm, riding, I'm happy to hear that. I'm riding on a Star Wars high after Rise of the Resistance and Galaxy's Edge and just having so much fun there doing that stuff and rewatching Rebels and Clone and Wars. And look, the movie's coming out right. like before you know it. <laughs> and I just recorded an episode on a mystery podcast. I don't want to say it yet because I don't think the episode actually comes out till like March or something, but where I talked about Star Wars expanded universe material and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm on like this Star Wars high and I'm just... I, I just want to. I, I kind of want to ride this wave into seeing the rise of Skywalker, and hopefully, just bring tissues, man. Just please. I know. I get know? the feeling it's going to be a sad one. It's going to be a little bit of a tearjerker. I don't know. I don't know how it's going. I I know that I'll probably cry just seeing Carrie Fisher on screen for the first time. Because when we were on Star Tours, uh, Princess Leia, the hologram. And I said this on the last episode, but like she she popped up and she she tells everyone that you know you know you're our only hope. And Lauren was the was the rebel spy that was on board our ship and stuff. So I looked at Lauren. I was like, "She's talking to you." And Lauren had like a little tear in her eye, and I had a little tear in my eye. I still get teared up over over Carrie Fisher. So I'll, that's probably going to happen when I first see her on screen there as well. All right, Jay, let's get into the trailers proper. Man, we're going to get started off with the one that came out first in this line. We're going to be talking about Black Widow. I used to have nothing. Nothing lasts forever. So what are you going to do? I've lived a lot of lives, but I'm done running from my past. I know you're out there. I know you know I'm out here. So we're going to talk like grown-ups? Is that what we are? To see you too, sis. What brings you home? Unfinished business. We have to go back to where it all started. Lucky us. One thing's for sure. It's gonna be a hell of a reunion. <laughs> Still fits. Family. Back together again. You got fat. So the MCU returns to the spy genre with Black Widow, which has a May, right now, tentative May 1st, 2020 release. It's being directed by Kate Shoreland, and you may know her as the director of Somersault and Lore, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, Somersault. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> which I saw, which was very good, but it was, that was a long time ago. 2004, 2004 man. 2004. She's also directed some episodes of the uh, Showtime show Smilf. But other than that, yeah, not, not a whole lot to speak of. Definitely nothing in the action. It's kind vein. of shocking that she actually got this job, to uh, be honest. But, but it's not too different than the Russo brothers being given being given the reins guess you're right. to so much when they did so little beforehand. Uh, and it's going to star Florence Pugh, Scarlett Johansson, David Harbour, and Rachel Weiss. And rumors are of a cameo from Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, and of course, William Hurt in here. William too, Hurt and, in there sure, as sure. well. So just breaking down the trailer a little bit here. Obviously, we know that this takes place before Avengers Endgame because do I really need to put up a little bit of a spoiler warning? But spoilers, uh, she has a bit of a competition with Hawkeye on who's going to commit suicide. She wins and commits suicide. Mm. <laughs> All so that they can. It's get between the- Civil War and Infinity War. It's yeah, right a- after the events of Civil War, but before Infinity War uh, this is when this takes place. She gets drawn back into her old life life and she we see that she comes in contact with Yelena Belov who they do re- refer to each other as sister but, but they I, could be assassin sisters right I don't believe that they are blood sisters I right. believe that this has something to do with the Black Widow program and she is another exactly. Black Widow now she has another role in the comics y- Yelena Belova is also known as the Iron Maiden who is a female villain so but she's also the May Queen right <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> She's also the May Queen. Yes, Florence Pugh. Flo- I know. She had a pretty good 2019. She's had a, she's had a good couple years. Yeah. Um, Fighting with my family. She's a great, and then Midsummer. Not becoming actress. And now this. But you may see a turn for, uh, of her to a darker side a lot sooner than you may think in this movie. They may not be getting along as much given her history in the comics. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people have rumors that she will eventually take on the role of Black Widow and go forward in the MCU. Cool. And and that's cool. just that's just kind of like it's just some people thinking that and and have theories about it. Uh and then we see David Harbour who will be playing Alexei Shostakov who is the Red Guardian. What is it? Who are you? What do you want? Oh my God, you've gotten fat. Come in, come, come. Now, slash Mr. Incredible, yeah. No, we sl- 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 <laughs> slash the, 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 the communist version of Captain America <laughs> yeah. is pretty much what it, what it comes down to. There's been multiple different versions of the Red Guardian in the comic books. Not all of them are super-powered, but it's very clear from when uh, he punches a door, uh, a giant steel door down, and it goes flying you know, down, slides across that. Yeah. He is super-powered in some way. He's just... He's just let himself go a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And I, but I I like his role. He's probably here. married now, a little fat and happy. You know, it's all right, good. Right. And I, but I but I like his role here. I like his inclusion in it. And then we also have Rachel Wives playing uh Melina V. Stokov. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course Scarlett Johansson comes back as 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 Natasha Romanov. And clearly something from her past. S- I'm thinking maybe William Hurt has something to do with it, but so there's something interesting about William Hurt here. Uh, when you, when we see him slash her sister when he's standing when he's standing there and, and the, in in one of the shots we see him, he is not old William Hurt. He is he's de aged William Hurt. Yeah, like twenty years de aged. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it made me wonder whether at some point, like, does that take place in the nineties? And not so much. And I think we're going to see a lot of flashbacks in this that that we weren't ready for. Because in the trailer, we get some Black Widow lines of her in in Winter Soldier. We get uh, one from Avengers Age of Ultron. And we get one from Endgame as well. So it seems like they're going to be kind of dipping into the past and future. Maybe all at the same time while telling the story that they're they're going to tell. But a lot of what people are thinking is, is going on is... Is there's the possibility that given Thunderbolt Ross's uh, presence here, that this may be the beginning of the Thunderbolts, which we've talked about before on the show, which I think is extremely interesting if if they do get into the Thunderbolts, which is basically Marvel's version of the Suicide Squad, right. all the villains on a superhero team. We're getting all the pieces now. You know, we 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 have Winter Soldier over in uh, over in uh, yeah Disney Plus Falcon. Winter Winter Soldier, and mm-hmm. he's been a member of it we, with Baron Zemo, also a founding member of it. Thunderbolt Ross, I mean, that's why it's called the Thunderbolts, because he's the one that kind of started the team. But he sure. also was Red Hulk and a member of the team as well. And, of course, Black Widow has been a member of the team. So it's possible that Florence Pugh could go on to be the Black Widow that joins that team. Yeah. We also get our first look at the main villain for this, which is Taskmaster. And big fans of the comic books know Taskmaster as the guy with the white cape and the white hood who carries a sword and a shield and bow and arrows. And he is a perfect muscle mimic of of what he sees other superheroes doing or possibly what she sees. There's some people who believe that Rachel Weiss could be the one behind the mask in this. Um, and it, he is a perfect muscle mimic. That's that's his power. That's that's what he's able to do. So he's able to throw things at the at the heroes that they would do themselves and we actually see a shield in this trailer kind of like flying and landing in front of them Mm. and it's like oh so at some point did taskmaster have to come across captain america to pick up that skill uh and there's also some hints that he may have some iron man type powers behind him as well Eh, perhaps Uh, but i don't like the design for taskmaster in this it's basically a motorcycle helmet with a skull painted on it so, uh, of, so, of shorts i like the I, I like the skull idea but i feel like they didn't want to do that because they already have the red skull and that's a skull and having having someone just wearing a plain old white skull over their face not so much but this does give me hope because one of my favorite relationships in the comics is between deadpool and taskmaster both mercenaries 
and now that Disney owns Deadpool. It and could Tas- happen. And Taskmaster. It could here. happen. It could happen. It makes me, it makes me a little happy. Makes me a little, but I was not happy with the way that Taskmaster looked in this. But that that will be the primary antagonist, possibly along with Florence Pugh as right. well. Yeah. So for me, overall, I enjoyed what I saw in this trailer. I just did not like the final shot of her falling down out of the plane or whatever, bobbing and weaving through rubble and other guys trying to shoot at her. I thought it was horrible (laughs) and campy and terrible. And it just did not fit the rest of the trailer and the way it looked aesthetically. I agree. It doesn't fit the rest of the trailer, but everything I saw in this trailer up until that point, it's given me a winter soldier vibe. Mm hmm. And, mm-hmm. and and I like that. I like the return to the spy genre. I like I, I like the idea of yeah. Of a I think story. it's gonna. I don't like the idea of the possibility of the Tony Stark you know rumored cameo that's going to be in it because just let him die. Just let it go. Yeah, but he's still alive in this time. I period. don't care. He's going to make some type of an appearance. In for a penny, in for a pound. If my Tony Stark is dead, don't, I don't want to. I don't want to see it. Yeah, uh, I'd rather it might be a dead. game time decision move. If they yeah. pull the plug on him or not. Absolutely. All right. So that that's really all I got to say about Black Widow. I'm sure that a lot of people have more things to say, but that's that that's really all I have at this time. Uh, obviously, we're going to get a lot more about the story and and why she's had to return to Russia, seek out one of her sisters, and also get Red Guardian involved to take down Taskmaster in future story trailers that we'll get. So what? Jay, let's head into our next trailer, which is Wonder Woman 1984. Welcome to the future. Life is good, but it can be better. And why shouldn't it be? All you need is to want it. Think about finally having everything you always wanted. I can save today, but you can save the world. Steve. The world needs you. You know what you need to do. Nothing good is born from lies. Greatness is not what you think. The year is 1984, and Wonder Woman has kept her head down low ever since the events of World War I, the death of Steve Trevor, and victory over Ares. And uh, she seems, we see a scene of her, like, kind of in in sort of like a fight. She's in full costume, but she takes her tiara off, throws it at a, at a security camera, mm-hmm. breaking it, meaning she has kept a low profile. Yes. Keeping in line with what we saw, Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice, where he was looking stuff up, and he sent her the email that says, is this you? Because there's not a lot of information on her at that time, because she's kept such a low profile. Yeah, she's very self-aware, and at the same time, you know, she really tries to avoid using her abilities right. so publicly. So and public. when it happens, exactly. it has to happen, and 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 you know she she cleans up her her mess afterwards <laughs> for sure. And uh, the main villain in this film is going to be Maxwell Lord, who's being played by the Mandalorians, Pedro Pascual. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a businessman who appeared in the 1980s in the comic books. Uh, he he was an entrepreneur who went on to make millions, and he actually bankrolled and funded the Justice League mostly until he kind of saw superhero as the ultimate threat to humanity and basically vowed to take them down to stop them from ever turning on humanity. Uh, he was originally didn't have powers, but he does get powers in the inv- after the invasion crossover in 1989, where he finds out he has the mental ability to give people a nudge. He can kind of push people to do his will. Um, it does come as somewhat of a cost to him. Usually he'll receive headaches or a nosebleed from doing it, but he does have a metahuman power. And I think they're kind of showing that in this trailer by that a little bit. that blue beam bit. that yep. comes down and hit him because super 
superhero movie, blue lights mean power, mean something. He's being imbued with something. So I think he may be, the aliens from Invasion may be giving him that power to do that, to take on Wonder Woman and give her the nudge. Uh, I also wonder whether he will be giving uh, Kristen Wiig's Cheetah the nudge as well because it's a bit of a mystery so in the comics there's always been multiple versions of Cheetah but it, in the in the version they're doing here she, I think that she's the one that brought uh, Steve back possibly but that's the vibe I kind of got sometimes but like, I also kind of got a different vibe as well so I, I'm not really sure I'm not really sure sometimes in the comic Cheetah, Cheetah is is one, it's a horrible trailer is the way it's constructed I'm, I'm, I, I, we'll get to that I'm not later. a huge fan of this trailer but <laughs> She she is a friend of Diana Prince who who in, in some versions she's imbued with magical powers and becomes a cheetah type person. In other versions, science gives her her powers. We do see Kristen Wiig in kind of like a lab in this, mm-hmm. so it's possible that she gets her powers through science. But she may turn on Wonder Woman as a friend, not just because of the the, the cheetah powers that she gets, but because of Maxwell Lord's nudge to her. Sure. Um, and then we also see. Steve Trevor in just the best outfit, a tracksuit with a fanny pack. <laughs> like you can't, you can't get more like boring dad in the 1980s than that. Um, we don't know where where he's come from, but it is assumed that this is the Steve Tre- the Steve Trevor from the 1920s. The, yes, it this, is, or, or, or from from World War One. That this is the same Steve Trevor. I agree. We even saw uh, a picture of Wonder Woman at Trevor Farm, meaning at some point after his death and after World War One, she returned to the states and went and met his family at some point, and maybe explained who she was and how she knew him uh but we do see a black and white picture of her at trevor farm so i i don't we, we don't pick up a whole lot of the story on this other than what we know from the material that's building it uh we do see her at one point in like the wonder woman i always called it god armor um but it, it's the armor that she was drawn at it drawn as in kingdom come and uh the and justice comic books that were drawn by alex ross it's really cool it's very cool very looking cool armor. very cool. i like it uh i also like the colors like I, I i i like i like the colors and i like i like the you know it's 1984 like the, the like year the i was born too. you know like i i like that aspect of it i think there's gonna be a lot of fun they got blue monday playing which yeah. was a, a single released in 1983 so it's there's it's, gonna be some fun to be had within this movie but you know i think I think it's a mix between the trailer was poorly cut and misleading to some degree but also there were some visual stuff that i just did not like i thought it was corny as fuck her her using her, her lassoing last- around like oh, way too much but in particular a, a fucking lightning bolt a bolt of lightning a I lightning bolt that. i hated that I, oh, come on please stop. well jay she is the daughter of zeus and Zeus is the god of lightning and thunder and all that stuff in in Greek mythology. So, I just don't. Does it stand to reason that she might have some control over Maybe the Maybe I'm just not a fan. <laughs> Let's just no, I'm chalk with, it up as that. I'm with you. I was not I was not down with the with the lightning uh, lasso. All right. Uh but I am intrigued by it. I, I get it. I get it. But I'm okay. <laughs> Look, I'm, 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 I am, I am kind of, I'm kind of I'm kinda down with it. You know, I, I, there, there are things in it in this trailer where, where I'm kind of like, uh, I'm honestly after watching this, I'm not sold on Kristen Wiig. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what to make of that. I think she has a bit of a lesbian crush on on her, and I don't. I think that she, that's my reasoning be- behind her c- getting Steve back to try right. and make her feel better or feel good or get on her good graces somehow yeah i just I, but it kind of felt like i'm the, not sure the comedy from Kristen wig uh you know playing barbara minerva I, it's just another Kristen wig thing it felt forced yeah it yeah. felt like it didn't really fit and i'm not sure if it really jives with gal gadot and what she has going on in the movies you know i mean there's a, a slight bit of comedy in the first one and when it was there it worked but when i was watching it here with like that oh my god yeah i've been in love so many times like i was like uh, it's just it, it felt f- i don't it know, felt like an snl character yeah it, it felt it just felt disingenuous you know it, it it didn't feel like it was organic for that microcosm of a scene that we were seeing yeah it may work in the film overall but at least from what i'm seeing here from that level of comedy i'm not down with it so and that was one of the things we talked about when we heard that Kristen wig was being cast we're like is is that the type of character we want to see from her here mm-hmm. is that really it i'm not uh, i'm not sure but 
time will tell on on Wonder Woman 1984. I am loving the the promotional material though, the pictures that we're getting with the with the bright colors and everybody in that in that bright neon you know what looks like multiple w's all around and i like yellow, that green, i like all that kind of stuff and blues sure. and stuff like that i i, I do really I enjoy that. all of that all right jake let's get into our final trailer for this week it's probably the one that i am most excited for it's probably the one that i picked up the most little tidbits on it's ghostbusters afterlife <laughs> Somehow, a town that isn't anywhere near a tectonic plate, that has no fault lines, no fracking, no loud music even, is shaking on a daily basis. Under the dining table now! Hey, remember that one summer we died under a table? I found it in my living room. Whoa, killer replica. A replica of what? A ghost trap? There hasn't been a ghost sighting in 30 years. New York in the 80s, it's like The Walking Dead. Your dad never mentioned this to you? It's just my mom. My grandfather died. My mom says we're just here to pick through the rubble of his life. Wait a minute. Who are you? for a reason. Come on, darling. <gasps> it has a gunner seat? Trevor and Phoebe move to a small town after the death of their grandfather. They move into his farmhouse and they begin to discover secrets of his past that bring them in contact with Mr. Guberson, the their science teacher and also local seismologist who tells them that they are living in a town that is frequented by earthquakes yet no they're not on a seismic plate and nowhere near a fault line mm-hmm. but there's no still, fracking no, there's no. still seismic activity going on and in the floorboards of their home they discover a ghost trap and what seems to happen is they are enlightened to the world of who their mysterious grandfather used to be and that is one of the four founding members of the Ghostbusters. Yes. I think it's safe to say that they are not Winston Zedmore's grandchildren, right? I think so. Yeah, I don't think there I don't think there's any I don't think there's any black in these kids whatsoever. <laughs> No. So, so I, I've narrowed it. To say. I've narrowed it down to the mysterious they grandfather. Both had dark hair. I've narrowed it down to the mysterious grandfather being either Egon Spangler or Ray Stance. And the reason that Ray Stance is still in the running, because I mean, look at Finn Wolfhard and 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 look at Phoebe with her glasses on and stuff like that. She looks like, and he looks like. The children of Egon, especially because this film is it, it, it just it just feels like that's who they are. Right. Like it just and, and we see them in the closet looking at the Ghostbusters flight jumpsuits and Spengler is the one we see. However, in 1984 Ghostbusters in the original Ghostbusters, Pete Vinkman says this to Ray Stance. You're never going to regret this, Ray. My parents left me that house. I was born there. You're not going to lose the house. Everybody has three mortgages nowadays. Which is actually secretly one of my favorite jokes in Ghostbusters. Everybody has three mortgages today, right? <laughs> I love that line because it's not it's not a joke that I I did that I didn't pick up on until I was an adult and actually had a mortgage and I understood it. <laughs> uh, but you know, he talks about how his how how St- Ray Stance talks about how his parents left him that house. Right. So that's what makes me think that it's very possible that they are Ray Stance's 
grandkids, but we know that all the Ghostbusters will be getting cameos in this at some point as their real characters, mm-hmm. as Pete Vakeman, as Winston Zedmore, and as Ray Stance. So it kind of feels almost obvious that it would be the one who's missing, the one who is dead in real life, that it that, that it is Egon Spangler's grandchildren who have moved there. And we even see, like, when Phoebe goes into the basement, that there looks like in Petri dishes that there is collections of spores, mold, and fungus. And I'm pretty sure that Egon was the Ghostbuster who said, Do you have any hobbies? I collect spores, molds, and fungus. So I'm really on board with this being... Egon Spangler's grandchildren. Sure. And also the fact that I think this actually really does feel like a Ghostbusters movie. It feels like it's in that world. You know? Well that's one of the things that To me it doesn't actually. No? No. To me, it feels like a a love letter to that world. Well, it feels in measures it does. It feels it feels nostalgic and paying reverence in the right ways. Don't get me wrong. But again, this is a teaser. And they took their time with this teaser. And I think they set up a really good for me, what I gathered, which is what I said, was a great world for it. A great sense of um now, but also a little bit more of a grounded sense of uh what the Ghostbusters used to be back in the day. And, and we have our counterpoint in this, right? We we have sure. Mr. Guberson played by Paul Rudd. Sure. Their, their science teacher. Perfectly cast. Who yeah. is a fan of the Ghostbusters and is the one that knows a lot about what the Ghostbusters were and, and, and their technology and stuff like that. So he's going to be kind of like their trainer and stuff like that. But... He is also our representation, mine and yours, in the film. Someone who remembers who they were, someone who can explain who they were to to a new audience, to a new generation, yep. and and that, that's his role in the film. And I like that, and I like Paul Rudd. I just I just fucking love the dude. So I, I, I'm down with it. Uh, some of the things that I'm picking up on on this, other than that, is you notice that the barn is kind of like collapsed, right? Like as they're pulling up to the house, the yeah. barn the barn's very collapsed. Uh, it reminded me of when the containment unit unit exploded in in the in the original ghostbusters and the roof of 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 the firehouse collapsed so it makes me think that after the events of of 84 ghostbusters they decided to move the containment unit to a less populated place like here in this small town where this farmhouse existed and the containment unit has ruptured or has been messed with in some way that has begun to release ghosts. And we are getting some ghosts that we may be familiar with in this because if you notice at one point, Finn Wolfhard is running through his house and what in behind him is books stacked up. One of the first ghosts that we see in the original Ghostbusters film was the librarian who liked to stack books. Yeah. So it's very possible that the Ghostbusters went back to the library at some point, captured her, and put her in the containment unit. We also get that ghost that's flying around that a lot of people are saying is very clearly Onion Head or Slimer, and Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the case at all. Because he's kind of bluish gray. And if you freeze frame it in a few spots, he he looks more like the Ghostbusters logo than he does like Slimer. But I think it's. I a, think uh, all right. It's all a right. very similar ghost to. See, Slimer, I did not, not break him. it down as much as you did. No, but, oh, clearly not. Um, clearly not. I, I initially thought it was Slimer. It's not. No, I don't and, think it is. It's. But not. at the same time, I I knew it didn't really look like Slimer at the same time. So I didn't right. really do my research as far as what it could have been. It could be another um, ghost, is what I'm you, saying. And you're right. I think it did have a little bit more of that logo. But, look to him. but don't get me uh, well it has a very circular mouth mm. right and slimer has this very big mouth big sure, teeth sure. giant tongue slobber yeah. like he's he he eats everything so yeah. uh i i don't i don't think that 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 ghost is slimer onion head uh i think that it is a, a different ghost but there are echoes that tell us who the big bad is going to be for this movie because Finn Wolfhard looks down into the mine shaft, and we know there's there, there's a mine in here because the sign says Shandor Mine, like Shandor Mining Company, right? Like, who was Shandor, Jay? I don't know. Yeah, Ego Shandor was the architect who built Dana's apartment building and was also big Gozer worshiper. Yeah. So as soon as I saw Shandor. Nice thread. As soon as I saw Shandor, I was like, okay, Shandor's also from this town. And his, his, whoever he is, he, he belonged to a, a well to do family who owned the mining company here. And something tells me that those mines are filled with Gozer 
and Zul type artifacts mm-hmm. and architecture that would allow for a gateway to open that lets in terror dogs because we get the scene at the very end where Paul Rudd is is in his car and we see this brown kind of like mucusy like oozy paw come down and land on front of his car we don't see what it is though but I think it's very clearly a terror dog <laughs> Okay, who brought the dog? Wow. Yeah. I I think it's going to be it's going to be Gozer, it's going to be Zool, it's going to be the Terror Dogs. They are going to take on the the villain who their grandfather, you know, crossed the streams and fought in the first Ghostbusters. One of the other interesting things, Jay, is that we know that there was a Ghostbusters 2 in 1989, yeah. and the Ecto unit in that was called the Ecto-1A, and it was somewhat different with different bells and whistles. I mean, you're sitting in the studio, you could just look behind you, and you could see the 1984 Ghostbusters Ecto unit of versus the, the 1989 Ecto unit up top. The, the 1989 version had a caution tape on the side. Uh, it also had bigger canisters on mm-hmm. top and stuff like that, more bells, whistles, more flashes lights so if this takes place after that why isn't that the ecto unit that's in the shed so it's a good question Uh, two possible things they're either ignoring 89 ghostbusters or i don't think so or there was a second ecto built for ghostbusters 2 when they retired the original one and locked it up in this shed here uh oh yeah oh yeah i'm not exactly sure (laughs) now i'm thinking maybe they did ignore it yeah it's possible. It's it, possible. It's possible that they may be ignoring Ghostbusters 2. Not confirmed, but it's very possible. We know that a lot of the people involved with Ghostbusters 2 were not happy with its with its receptance, with the way the movie turned out, mm. particularly Bill Murray. And one of the ways that they may have gotten Bill Murray involved is they told him, we're ignoring Ghostbusters 2. You hated it? Okay. It's gone. How about that? Right. Very possible. Terminator style. Terminator style. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, that's obviously not confirmed. But that's just a little bit of a theory of mine because it technically, if this was it makes where, sense, though. if this is where they put the Ecto One A after Ghostbusters Two, that's what that vehicle should look like, and not the one from Ghostbusters. You know, the original. And then one more thing that I picked up on that I truly loved was when Phoebe sits in the Ecto One and best the, part the seat jumps out and it's a gunner seat oh man my there's a gunner seat my ecto one toy that i had as a kid did that it's nothing that was ever in either of the movies but it, i believe it was in the video game by activision that serves as basically a ghostbusters 3 and i've told people to at least if you're not going to play it at least go online and watch all the watch all the clips from it because it is fun it's it's great it is embodies ghostbusters lore and 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 the actors all return to do the voices and it's fantastic but the the gunner seat comes out and i was like that's nothing from the movies that that's been there before but they put it in here for me who collected the toys and and wanted them to use the gunner seat and you're, and you're right and this is part of the whole love letter it's aspect, part of the love letter right? of it all and the, i'm i'm excited like i i i was when i watched the trailer the first time i was kind of like Okay, like I'm picking up these little things and stuff and I'm feeling it, but I'm not in love with it yet. But it wasn't until I saw the Ecto-1 streaming across the wheat field and you hear the... (laughs) And you get like that iconic siren that the the Ghostbusters have that Mm -hmm. like I started feeling it. I started feeling like... I'm there. Like I, I, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to, I'm starting to, to want this more now. You know, it's been this idea, and it's been a good idea since I've heard about it. And I want. We I, need another trailer. We do to the, the, the cross the finish line as far as like for our anticipation and but excitement. I've, right. But now that I got this, and I and I heard the sounds, and you know, like hearing a proton pack start up, and it's right. just that yeah, sh- those little things, yeah, yeah, and and yeah. and seeing a ghost trap and stuff like like here like seeing the seeing, that look good, right? Seeing the it doesn't look corny. Hearing hearing the sounds and and just getting a, a tiny bit of the original score, I'm just like. All right, I am ready for this, and I think Sony's right. Like, it, this is a good time for this. It's it's it feels right. It feels right now. 
it, it would feel even better if you didn't in, if you didn't do 2016 Ghostbusters, <laughs> but you did it, and we've all left it behind, That's true. That's and we're far true. enough removed from it. I think so. It'll be four years after that. We can all go. Yeah. No, that was a that was an experiment that happened that didn't really turn out well. Mm. But now we got this, and it just it feels it feels it right. feels right. It feels what they should have done from the yes, from the get go. I agree. And I like I like the actors who's in it. I, I I like I like who's who's behind it here. I you know we've already talked about Paul Rudd. I like him. I like Finn Wolfhard. And, you know, they're also going to be having Sigourney Weaver show up in it, Annie Potts, Dan Aykroyd. So, like, I'm I'm down with what's going on with it, and, and nothing sells me on it more than the fact that Jason Reitman has taken over the reins from Dear Old Dad and is now directing this one. But uh, let us know what you think of the Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer. Yes, please do. Reach out to us on Twitter, at SuperMoviePod, on Facebook, Super Movie Bros Podcast over there. You can also reach us if you still use email. I don't know who does, but some people do. Super Movie Bros Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, next week, me and Jay will be in full Star Wars mode because we are going to be going to see The Rise of Skywalker and mm-hmm. having a review for that. But our episode next week will also have our top 10 Star Wars moments. Combined list, Jay. We're going to have a combined list for our top 10 Star Wars moments. Because it'll we, be big. we got to keep the Star Wars momentum going. Like, just, just get us over to finish line. I'm currently... Yeah, we're playing our part. Play your part. I'm play play play, along with us. I'm, Interact with us. Tell I'm us playing what you my guys part love. double because I am playing. <laughs> right now, I'm watching all this Star Wars material. I finished Rebels. I'm now back into rewatching Clone Wars and I'm also doubly playing Star Wars Battlefront because they, they they just had a new edition come out of it. The the celebration exist uh, edition come out. So I've been replaying a lot of stuff in that, but I'm also still playing Jedi Fallen Order. I'm at the tail end of that game. Mm. And I'm I'm just gonna ride the Star Wars ray wave right into my Thursday night seats and watch the movie. And Perfect. yeah I'm just I'm just down for it. So I want to thank all of you guys for listening. Have a great one. Cheers. Cheers. 